The fleet floats just beyond the ascendancy barrier, within scanning range of the installation, but unable to approach closer. On the bridge of the Emancipation, Nishana Aerith stares at the massive structure, wonder and doubt warring in her mind. Beside her, Aurelia says, You're frowning again. Nishana looks at her and says, I was just thinking. I noticed. Nishana turns her attention back to the station. It is hard to believe everything we've done in the last ten years has led to this. We are on the precipice of achieving our aims, or losing everything. Aurelia touches her shoulder and says, We can do this. We must do this. Of course. Is your nephew prepared? Yes, he is. Aurelia smiles. Oracle made sure of it. Nishana is silent for a moment. And you still trust that AI? Aurelia studies her face. He has given me no cause not to. What's really troubling you? Other than a few skirmishes, we have not run afoul of my old comrades in ten years of being on the move in the Outlands. We have encountered them several times in the last few weeks. Nishana takes a deep breath. They are closing in, and this time we have no choice but to stand and fight. If we do not take control of that station, if we lose it to them, everything we have done will be for naught. And that's a lot of pressure to put on a kid, right? Nishana nods and looks away. Aurelia reaches out and turns her face back. They're not kids anymore, no more than we were when we started this. Trust in them. They will open the way. Nishana holds her gaze, and Aurelia does not look away. At last, Nishana smiles, a small, careful smile, and says, All right, then let's finish this. Welcome back for episode 25 of Errant Adventures. As always, I'm your game master and solo player, Steve Morrison. On this week's episode, Lucius and the crew of the Reclaimer attempt to bypass the shield protecting the World Seeder before the Iron Hawks find them. Find out what happens on episode 25, Barrier to Entry. Aboard the Reclaimer, Lucius and Adelie prepare to launch from the Emancipation and head out into the deep vastness of space to approach this barrier which is surrounding this Ascendancy artifact to try and find a way through. Coming with them are Aurelia and also Lieutenant Mila as a representative of Lodestar. And I think because in the last episode they came across some scientists, there's also one of them is going to come with as an advisor with regards to Ascendancy technology. Let's figure out who this character is before we move on with their attempt to breach the barrier around this artifact. So we know that they're a scientist, and so we don't have to roll on their character role, but let's take a couple first looks and maybe a disposition as well. So we've got 12, alluring, and 79, tattooed. Interesting, okay. So we've got an alluring and tattooed scientist. What's their disposition? This could go very, very poorly. 46, suspicious, interesting. So an alluring and tattooed scientist who is suspicious, and let's get a name for them. So we'll consult the name chart. 17. Brennan. And let's roll a last name as well. 96. Petrov. Brennan Petrov. And last but certainly not least, let's roll up a couple aspects for them as well. 81. 
stern and 29 deceitful ooh lucius and crew greet dr brennan petrov as he approaches and i think lucius is watching as he's walking across the docking bay and he sees this tall lanky scientist who is covered in tattoos and has hair that is dark as night that is kind of very fashionably cut partially across his face and he's carrying a small bag over his shoulder and as he approaches lucius steps forward and says you must be dr petrov and the scientist looks at him sort of quirks an eyebrow while also still frowning at the same time and says tell me you're not the leader of this operation and lucius says i am i'm lucius tarquin and dr petrov looks over at aurelia who is clearly the oldest person present and says no really you're in charge though aurelia shakes her head and says This is my nephew's mission. I'm just here to advise. Lucia says, Please, Dr. Petrov, don't take my age as an impediment. We will find a way through the barrier, and we will find out the truth about this device. We're just happy to have you along. Please, come aboard and and tell us about your expertise. Obviously, you were chosen because you have some knowledge of the ascendancy. What what are your areas of study? And Dr. Petrov says, My areas of study revolve around the biokinetic links between ascendancy technology and what we believe was the native abilities of the ascendants. I'm really interested to see how Their technology binds with their physicality. And Adelie, I think, gets a little uncomfortable at that. And she says, welcome aboard, doctor. And the scientist looks at her and his eyes narrow a little bit. And I don't know how much he knows about her status as a paragon. So let's ask the oracle. So I think it is unlikely that Lodestar, specifically Clan Leader Aerith, would have told him that she was a paragon. Because I think they are still treating that as fairly confidential information. So I think it's unlikely. 76 or greater. And I rolled 100. So he found out somehow that Adelie is a paragon and that she has ascendancy technology inside of her in some way. And I think maybe that's the deceitful part of his personality is not necessarily that he's anti-Lodestar so much as he volunteered for this mission because he wants to study Adelie and if possible, figure out how to replicate what has happened to her for other people, perhaps even himself. So they invite the scientist aboard and they allow him to stow his gear in the hold. Uh, There's a berth for him. And fortunately for them, because this is a scientific research vessel of the Ascendancy, there are probably a lot of tools aboard that are going to assist them as they try to figure out how to breach this barrier. With the permission of Clan Leader Aerith, the Reclaimer departs from the Emancipation and arcs out into space. It flies forward towards the artifact and comes to a stop just beyond the edge of the barrier. As they are sitting there, scanning it, Lucia says, All right, everyone, we have to find a way through here, and we have to find a way through before the Iron Hawks catch up with us. 
I don't know how we're going to do it, but we have some experience with ascendancy barriers, thanks to my aunt, and with Adelie's help as a paragon, and at this he kind of gives the scientist a look to see how he reacts, and the scientist does not respond at all. His face doesn't change. He simply nods once, and Lucius and Adelie share a look of maybe a little bit concern. Lucius says, We don't know how much time we have before the Iron Hawks catch up with us, so let's get to work. And they are going to start scanning the barrier to try and determine a way through. And so we're going to start off with a little gather information. So this is going to be plus wits, and uh, I am going to take a bonus from Adelie, uh, which is going to give Lucius plus two. And so they are going to roll at plus five on this. That's an eight on the action die, a seven and a nine on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So the information provides new insight, but also complicates your quest. Envision what you discover, then take plus one momentum. So we're going to go ahead and take an additional momentum, and I really wish that I had used my archivist ability, but it wouldn't have mattered, other than I would have gotten a little bit of extra momentum. So that's all right, we'll save it for another time. Let's go ahead and roll on our action and theme to see what kind of information they get to help them determine going forward. I think we can say with certainty that getting through the barrier is not going to be as simple as it was when Lucius got through the barrier on Rampart. It's not going to be just a matter of modulating their shield frequency so they can pass through. This is a much more intense and sophisticated barrier, and Adelie is like, I might be able to tear a hole in the barrier, but... I don't know what sort of defenses there are on the other side, and it may cause some sort of catastrophic response from the facility. We should try to find another way. So we're going to roll on action theme to see what they discover. So we got one. Abandon. That's not good. 32. Abandon expedition. Okay. So what that says to me is they are in deep space where this artifact is floating, and they are scanning for some sort of weakness in the barrier that they can try to penetrate. And they realize that it is solid. Like, there is no way to get through. Lucius still has his scans from the first time when he came through this way. And there is no clear passage through this barrier. However they detect an energy signal that is emitting from somewhere in a nearby system that is actually directed towards this energy barrier. And Adelie posits, and I think Lucius backs her up on this, that this is some sort of power source that is powering the shield from afar and that there's maybe some sort of like resonant link between them and that if they can get to this place and find it they can either shut it down or find a way to gain entrance to the facility and so the abandoned expedition is the reclaimer is going to have to leave lodestar here floating on the outside of the barrier and is going to head off on a separate mini expedition to find this signal. Uh, I think that is going to be an expedition because they have a direction, but they don't know where that's going to end up. But I think it's just going to be a troublesome expedition because I don't think it's all that far away. So we're going to go ahead and label this find the signal source. Lucius is going to contact the Emancipation, is going to fill them in on what they've discovered, and is going to inform them that they are going to go away from this artifact to find the signal source so that they can attempt, hopefully, 
to gain entrance to this barrier. So we are going to go ahead and undertake an expedition, and Lucius is going to push the engines. They're going to move at speed to reach the signal source as quickly as possible so they can find out how to get through the barrier. So this is plus edge. We've got an eight on the action die, a four and a six on the challenge dice for a strong hit. So we reach a waypoint and we can mark progress. So we're gonna mark three boxes of progress for this troublesome journey. And we are going to envision our waypoint. So let's go ahead and take a space sighting. Where do they drop out of E-Drive? We've got a 10, which is a stellar object. So let's go ahead and roll on our stellar object. 64, a white dwarf shining with spectral light. Ooh. Uh, so they drop out and there is this white dwarf shining in the distance and this eerie opalescent light is cast across the hull of the Reclaimer, and Lucius is going to look around and say, a white dwarf, I wonder if there is some connection with this signal source. Maybe it is amplifying its power. We should take a closer look. And they are going to explore this waypoint, see if there's anything interesting here in this area. So we're gonna roll again, plus wits, which is plus three, to explore the waypoint. A nine on the action die, a four and a one on the challenge dice for a strong hit. So we can either find an opportunity, envision a favorable insight, situation, resource, or encounter, take plus two momentum, or mark progress on our expedition. So let's find out what we find here at this place and then we'll decide between if we want to take momentum or if we want to mark more progress. So I'm going to roll on descriptor and focus. So I've got a 29, which is decaying, and the focus is 63, reality, decaying reality. Okay, so there is this fissure in space that the signal they actually find is emitting through this fissure and is hitting the white dwarf and then is bouncing off of that and heading towards where the barrier and the station where the ascendancy artifact are located and so lucia sees this fissure in space and he says i wonder if this is artificially constructed if the ascendancy found some way to generate a signal and send it across a, a greater... Of course they did! They were able to use quantum communication. This is amazing. And he is going to draw closer to it. And I think we're actually going to mark progress here instead of taking the momentum because they are going to be able to travel through this rift and follow the signal through the rift. And they're actually realizing that the signal may be further away from where they're located than they thought. But because of this fissure, they are able to get there faster. And so we are going to go ahead and undertake another leg of our expedition as they pass through this fissure in space. Continue with speed, plus edge. A 7 on the action die, a 5 and a 10 on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So we can make progress. That's going to take us to 9. And then we are going to have to suffer a cost. Let's go ahead and see what's on the other side of this fissure before we decide if we suffer something en route or when we get there. 73. A large rogue asteroid. Okay, so I think this is where the signal is probably coming from, as there's this massive asteroid that is soaring through space. And I think the fissure is somehow connected to this asteroid. And so wherever this asteroid goes, the fissure is actually trailing in its wake. So they come out through this fissure and they see this asteroid looming up ahead. 
And whatever like radiation or detritus that is coming off of this asteroid and like falling through this fissure, they are in the path of. And Lucius is going to have to make a maneuver uh, to try and get the ship out of the way before it gets hit by some of this debris. So he's going to face danger with speed, mobility, and agility plus edge. And he is an ace pilot. And so when he has to face danger to guide his vehicle through harm or through a hazard or out of harm's way, he can take plus one and add plus one momentum on a hit. So there's going to be plus three on this face danger to avoid the detritus from the rogue asteroid. And it is uh, going to be a six on the action die, a six and a seven on the challenge dice for a miss. So fail or a momentary success is undermined by a dire turn of events. Let's go ahead and pay the price. 14 is going to be you face a tough choice. Okay, so they come out through this fissure and the asteroid is there. They are avoiding some of the detritus coming off of this asteroid. And I think Lucius has to make the choice between pressing on and landing on the asteroid or returning back through the fissure and trying to find the source of this signal a different way. So I'm going to go ahead and say that he is going to choose to pass through. He's going to continue on, but the Reclaimer is going to take two harm from that choice as the ship gets pelted by all of this debris and he is going to press on. They're drawing close to the asteroid, and we're going to go ahead and finish our expedition. We've got nine progress on this troublesome expedition. Not so troublesome when you come through a space rift. And we get two sixes on the challenge dice against a progress of nine, which is a strong hit with an opportunity. So on a strong hit, we're going to mark one tick on our Discovery's Legacy track, which takes us to three out of four ticks in our sixth box. And we are going to go ahead and say that they land on this asteroid and the opportunity that they get because of the matched sixes on that finish an expedition move is that there is an ascendancy facility here that is still somewhat functional and they are able with the help of the reclaimer and with Adelie's knowledge of the ascendancy is able to open the docking bay doors on this facility and they are able to land aboard this asteroid. The crew of the Reclaimer find themselves on this rogue asteroid hurtling through space. They have landed in the docking bay of an Ascendancy facility. And let's go ahead and ask the Oracle if this is a large facility that they might have to explore, or if it's a very simple facility. So I'm going to say... Is this a large facility? I'm going to say it's likely that it is. 26 or greater. 11. No, it's not a large facility. Okay, so they emerge from the Reclaimer. They're all wearing EV suits, and they look around, and they're in this docking bay. There's one door that leads out of the docking bay which they follow, they are able to open, and they enter a small corridor. I think it branches off at one point, and they find some living quarters, uh, like a couple of barracks. It really seems like this was some sort of outpost that was very, very sparsely populated. And they are going to bypass the living quarters and they are going to continue to where this central control facility is. 
It's this small room with a central pillar and, again, one of those quartz orbs that is floating above. Does this station have its own artificial intelligence? I'm going to say it's 50-50. So 51 or greater, yes it does. And I got a 50 exactly, which means no, no it does not. So this pillar with the floating orb is obsidian. It's not quartz. And it is just floating there, and as they approach, Adelie says, it's not an AI. It is an access point. And Lucius nods and says, we saw some of these in the uh, the flagship of that ascendancy wreck that we were in. I think I can probably connect to it. And he is going to approach and is going to attempt to gain access to this system. And I think to do that, he's going to just go ahead and roll a face danger. And because he is a tech, he's going to add plus one to this roll. It's going to be plus wits. So this is plus four as he tries to gain access to the Ascendancy facility. I've got an eight on the action die. I've got two fives on the challenge dice for another strong hit with an opportunity. So we're going to take a plus one momentum, which is going to take our momentum up to four. And Lucius is successfully able to interface with the device and we get an opportunity here. So I'm going to roll action and theme on the nature of that opportunity. 55, impress, and 45, honor, impress, honor. Okay, so the last ascendants who guarded this facility have long since died but they were able to realize as that implacable force of genetically modified soldiers swept across the forge and wiped out the ascendancy they were able to determine that they could power down the facility's barrier enough that they were able to keep it below those creatures threshold for discovery and so lucius looking at this technology is able to realize that he can replicate it on the reclaimer and this is the opportunity that they can at will basically power down and power back up the barrier as they are doing this i think lucius says they sacrificed themselves. The guardians of this facility, they waited and watched from here. They watched as their civilization was struck down. And they used the facility here to try and shield that artifact from discovery. Why would they do that? And he is looking at it a little bit more. And then he says... Oh, oh no. And Adelie comes up beside him and says, What is it, Lucius? He says, I think there are ascendants on that planet inside the facility. I think they used it as a last bastion. I think that they used their ability to power down the shield around it, to hide it from the attackers, from the cataclysm so that some of their people could survive. And there's silence in the room for a minute. And then Dr. Petrov says, Are you suggesting that there are ascendants still alive on the inside of that facility? And Lucius shrugs and says, I, I don't know. It's been thousands of years. It's possible that they died out or it's possible that they escaped after the cataclysm ended and went somewhere else all i'm saying is those guardians who protected this facility they kept that station secret and safe for a reason 
it was their last act. I think they used all the power that they had to keep that place safe for a reason. Aurelia says, Lucius, can you overcome the shield? And Lucius nods. And she says, well, then there's only one way to figure out what's really down there. Let's go. And they are going to return to the Reclaimer, and they are going to head back to Lodestar. And we're going to go ahead and mark two progress on our extreme vow to find the artifact and stop the Ironhawks from gaining control of it. We're at one full box of progress now. They're able to return to the area of space where the artifact is located. Lodestar is still there. However, because we know that the Iron Hawks are continually closing in, let's find out if there is a battle raging when they return. So we're going to ask the Oracle. I think it is a small chance that the Iron Hawks would have found Lodestar this quickly. So it is 91 or greater. Here we go. 82. Pretty darn close, but not enough. So no, the Iron Hawks have not yet caught up to Lodestar. The Reclaimer returns, drops out of E-Drive, and the Lodestar fleet is right where they left it, just beyond the barrier of the Ascendancy artifact. Lucius and crew maneuver the Reclaimer into position, and using their new knowledge of the Ascendancy barrier, Lucius is able to bring it down for a brief moment while the Reclaimer and the Lodestar fleet move inside. Once they are inside, Lucius dials the shield back up again, and they are safely ensconced within the barrier, but also still on the outside of the station. So this Ascendancy station is massive, and there is this small, verdant world that is balanced in between the clutches of this station's arms, and Lucius looks at it and says... I wonder if there's life there. And they are going to take the Reclaimer close, and they are going to scan the planet. And as they do so, I think we're going to go ahead and roll another gather information. So this is going to be plus wits as they are scanning. We've got a seven on the action die and two threes on the challenge dice for, I think, the third strong hit with an opportunity of this episode. So we're going to take plus two momentum for that strong hit, which is going to take us up to six. And we discover something helpful and specific. The path you must follow or action you must take to make progress is made clear. Envision what you learn. So first of all, I want to ask the Oracle, is there... Ascendant life on this world? This is a huge question, and I think it is unlikely. It has been thousands of years. We don't know how many survived. I think it is unlikely that there is ascendant life on there. I might even go so far as to say that there is a small chance, 91 or greater. So let's say it's a small chance. 91 or greater, that there is Ascendant Life still on this world. 48. So, no. They scan the planet, and while there is life on this world, there is not any Ascendant life signs on the planet. So, they gain some sort of useful knowledge. So, let's turn our attention to the space station and go ahead and roll on the descriptor and focus to see if that gives us a clue. 30, defended, and 36, grave. Defended, grave. Ooh. Okay, so I think what they 
detect is that there is still power on the station, obviously, since this planet, which is out in space with no nearby star, is still habitable and is still viable. As they are scanning it, Adelie says, I sense something. I think there's an AI aboard that station. And Lucia says, that would make sense. Okay, can we talk to it? And Adelie says, I can try. And she is going to close her eyes and she's going to try and reach out to this AI. And I think it is 50-50 whether or not she is actually able to connect with it. 29, she's not able to connect with it yet. So she shakes her head and says, I cannot. It seems to be powered down at the moment, almost as if it is preserving energy. There is still power on that space station, but it is very minimal at the moment. Lucia says, makes sense. It's been sitting out here for thousands of years. They would have had to have preserved power. I guess the only thing we can do is we can land and we can explore it. And they are going to fly the Reclaimer in, and they are going to land on this Ascendancy Station, and they're going to have to explore it. As the Reclaimer approaches the Ascendancy Station, the sheer vastness of it boggles the mind. As the ship passes the miniaturized planet and soars up one of the arms of the station, it dwarfs anything that Lucius has seen before. Breach, the seat of Clan Tarquin power, built on an ascendancy space station that his great-grandfather discovered hovering above the maw, the broken world below that powers it, is dwarfed by the size of this station. As they continue to make their way up the arm and to the upper region of this space station, Lucia says, I can't believe how big this is. It could take us days or weeks, maybe even months, to search it, Adelie says. Perhaps. But we will do what we have to. And they are going to find a place to land. Lucius brings the Reclaimer in to a small docking port off to one side at the top of this massive space station. And they are going to settle in, they're going to suit up, and they are going to explore the World Cedar. And this is going to be an extreme expedition, as is fitting of an extreme vow. So this is also going to be an Ascendancy Vault. So I'm going to use the Precursor Vault Oracle Tables to help me explore this. So they are going to emerge once they're all suited up. We've got Lucius and Adelie. Aurelia is coming. Lieutenant Mila is coming. And then Dr. Petrov is also coming. And they are going to emerge out into this small docking bay. And what do they see? A 10 on the first look carried tech is disrupted. So as soon as they step off the Reclaimer, Lucius looks around and he, he feels this buzz. And I think they are wearing EV suits, but even through those, he feels this tingle, almost like electricity on his skin and his hair, his, his sandy blonde hair sort of stands up on end and he gets this tingle down his spine. And Brutus, which is floating around behind him, all of a sudden just drops to the deck. And he turns and looks and is like, Brutus! 
and the bot just crashes into the bay floor. And then he is going to run up and try to scan it with his scanner that's built into his suit. And that is also fritzing. And he says, I don't understand. He turns and looks at Adelie and she has her eyes closed and her hands kind of outstretched. And she says, Lucius, this place is ancient and powerful. There is something at its core I cannot describe. It is beautiful and terrifying. It is beyond anything I have ever felt. Warden and Query, they feel as though they've come home. And she turns back and there are tears running down her cheeks but they're not human tears. It is this bioluminescent oil that seems to be running down her cheeks and dripping off of her face. And Dr. Petrov is like, how curious. And Lucia says, Adelie, are you all right? And she blinks a little bit, wipes away some of the tear with her hand and looks at it and says, I'm all right, Lucius. There's just so much here. It is so vast. And there is so much sadness here. There's so much loss. And she almost bowls over. Lucius catches her and helps her stay upright. And he says, let's try to keep moving. Maybe once we're out of the docking bay, we'll be able to get our tech working again. And he is going to guide Adelie to the doorway, and they pass through into the outer corridor, which leads deeper into this vault. So let's go ahead and start by undertaking our expedition here. So they are going to stay vigilant, so they're going to roll plus wits. This is plus three for our first part of this expedition of the World Cedar. Oh, wow, okay. I've got a seven on the action die and I've got two ones on the challenge dice for yet another strong hit with a match. This is gonna be progress on the search. So that's gonna be two ticks of progress on that first box. And I think the opportunity is that indeed, once they emerge from the docking bay, whatever that like static electricity that was in there that interacted with their technology and disrupted it is negated. And so Brutus comes back online, their scanners come back online, and they are able to use their technology as they would expect. Now, let's see what our waypoint is. So we're going to roll on the vault interior. 17. Damage or debris? Okay, so they emerge into this first corridor and they are making their way through and it is clear that it is an old, old station. And so there are parts of the station that are falling apart and this corridor that they're walking through the debris is starting to come down off of the walls and is layering on the floor. All of these panels and like wires, and they're not human made wires. They're these strange translucent veins that run through the heart of this station. And this dark amber liquid is being pumped through them and Adelie looks at it and she says, that is how they transmitted information. They didn't use circuits in the same way that we do. It's almost living, but it's not. There are tiny machines within that. And Lucia says, how curious. I would love to get a closer look at that, but we should keep moving. And they are going to continue on their expedition 
continuing to stay vigilant, plus wits. And we've got a four on the action die, we've got a five and a nine on the challenge dice. For a miss. Waylaid by a crisis, or arrive at a waypoint to confront an immediate hardship or threat. Are they waylaid by a crisis? I think it's probably likely that they're waylaid by a crisis. So 63, yes, they are waylaid by some sort of crisis. Let's find out what that might be. So they're on their way to the next waypoint when they reach a open door. And as they step out of the hallway into this open door, all of their scanners begin to go crazy. And Lucius looks at his scanner and his eyes widen as he sees the radiation scale skyrocket. And he says, everyone back, 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 back. And they start moving away as this small panel is open in the ceiling of this small room. And there is what looks like a small sun that is burning inside this panel, and it looks like it is emitting radiation that is filling this room. And they are going to retreat, and uh, I think Lucius is going to make a face danger move with his command, uh, which is plus heart, to try and basically impress upon them that they need to get out of there fast. It's plus heart. Five on the action die, a one, and a six on the challenge dice is a weak hit. So it's a success, but at a troublesome cost. I think it's easy. We're just going to lose a momentum as he is able to convince them to move. So nobody is affected by the high, high levels of radiation, but they have to find another way around. And so it's going to take extra time to make their way around. So we're going to go ahead and take another leg of this expedition. And again, staying vigilant, rolling plus wits. Eight on the action die, a seven and a one on the challenge dice for another strong hit. So this time we reach a waypoint and mark progress. So that is going to take us up to a full box of progress. We've got one progress now. And we are going to go ahead and envision our waypoint. 97. Roll twice. So we got 91, which is a descriptor in focus. And 23 energy discharges. So let's look at the descriptor in focus, and that might give us a sense of what these energy discharges might be. So our descriptor in focus... We've got 18 collapsed and three anomaly collapsed anomaly. Okay. So they backtrack down the hallway. They came, they find a side passageway. They make their way around the room that had that massive, massive spike of radiation. And then they find their way down a couple levels and they are in this open area where as they emerge they see that the ground itself the floor has been consumed by a rift it's another rift just like the one that they saw in space that led to the asteroid but this time instead of there being a signal that's emitted out of it there is actually like energy that is pouring out of it and spilling out onto the floor, almost like magma, some sort of like superheated metal even, that is pouring out of this fountain in the middle of this room. And it is running down through these grooves on the floor and then leading into tubes, which seem to be collecting it. And then these arms are coming along and taking the full tubes, disconnecting them from the injectors, 
and moving them into a like storage area, which they are then transported somewhere else. And as they enter this room, they see this rift open and this molten iron is spilling out of this area and the heat of it burns on their EV suits, but they are able to resist it and they are able to bypass it. And we're going to take a moment to explore this waypoint because I think Lucius is very, very curious about this molten metal and the energy potentials within. And so we're going to go ahead and roll plus wits to explore this waypoint. Nine on the action die, a four and a five on the challenge dice for a strong hit. We can choose one. We can either envision a favorable insight situation or resource and take plus two momentum, or we can gain progress, mark progress on the expedition. We're going to mark progress, and I think that progress is going to relate to the, um, let's see, let's roll an action theme to see what our progress is. 18 challenge 76 rumor challenge rumor so i think that this room contains these massive vials of this superheated metal which is emitting incredibly powerful levels of energy and lucius looks at it and he says after scanning it for a little bit and he says this is why the Ascendancy technology works so well. This is almost a renewable power source that continues to generate power and energy. If we can use this to power our ships, we may not need to use traditional drives anymore. We might be able to power whole star systems, be able to power whole planets and settlements and Lucius turns to Aurelia and says this may be the key to lifting up all of the people of the forge renewable power renewable energy that can be used for good and she nods and says it's a step in the right direction Thanks for listening to Errant Adventures, and thanks so much to Sirenscape for the lovely ambient sounds and music throughout the episode. If you enjoyed the show, please tell anyone and everyone in your life about it. And if you haven't already, please rate and review the show on your favorite podcast app. It really does help others find me. If you want to interact with me, my handle on Instagram and Twitter is at Errant Solopod, or you can email me at Errant Solopod at gmail.com. I also post short fiction and campaign-related materials on my website, errantadventurespod.com. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>